Hi, this is Nigel Merrick from the Zenilog Photography Business and Marketing website and welcome to this third episode of Headshot Monday. And today we're going to look at the idea of SEO for photographers versus website design. So each week I get a lot of questions on SEO for photographers as well as marketing and other related topics. Most of the time I can send a quick answer back, but sometimes the questions require much more than a simple email response and the answer can actually help a lot of other professional photographers who are struggling with similar issues. Here's a great question that I got from one of my SEO Essential students just yesterday. Suppose I don't want to show text on my home page. Those of us who feel aesthetics and design are important on the landing page often just want images. It has a stronger visual impact and allows people to get your images and read later rather than have text right away. What are my options? Can I hide the text on the landing page? Now, as you'll see, this is really several questions rolled into one. But first, let's set the scene. The question arose from a challenge the photographer was facing with SEO, how to get found by potential clients in the search engines. This particular photographer's home page is designed from a visual perspective to showcase his work to potential clients with an elegant slideshow of photographs with little or no text on the page to give Google any real sense of what the page is actually about. Since the home page is the most important page on your website as far as SEO is concerned, Google is left scratching its head with few clues as to what keywords it should associate with that page. The end result? A home page that ranks very poorly with a barely a trickle of visitors from the search engines. So we're back to relying on other channels to attract visitors, few of which are quite as effective as the highly targeted leads that we could see from natural search traffic. So what's to be done here? What's the right choice for the professional photographer who's wrestling between aesthetics and functionality? First, we need to understand that the original question has several components to it. First, can my photography website homepage be a simple splash page? Two, can I satisfy Google's need for text by fooling it in some way and showcase just the photography for potential clients? And three, is it correct to assume that aesthetics, design and photography are critical for converting leads into clients? So let's take these in turn. So first, using splash pages for a home page. In the original question, the photographer used the term landing page to mean the home page. But a landing page is actually a totally different animal in marketing speak. In the context of the question, what we actually have here is a splash page. This is designed to act as a gateway to the website, usually with a set of photographs, most often in a slideshow, and some links to other parts of the website, but with very little marketing copy. Splash pages can be thought of as analogous to a storefront window designed for the sole purpose of attracting people inside. But a website is not a traditional store and it doesn't need a splash page. In fact, splash pages can be harmful to your bottom line. We live in a crazy age and it looks like it will only get crazier. People are insanely busy and when they're browsing the web they want to find what they're looking for quickly. The average internet browser makes a goldfish seem like the most attentive creature on the planet. If the page loads too slow, they're gone. Not what they thought they would see? Gone. Too many clicks to get where they need to be? Gone. If you don't believe me, head over to your Google Analytics report and take a look at the average time spent on your website or your bounce rate. Better yet, use the horribly addictive spy functions in Get Clicky and watch in real time as people come and go. If your website isn't designed for doing business, it's not a pretty site. Business online just isn't the same as business in the real world, and splash pages just get in the way of doing business for several reasons. For example, splash pages force the user to click yet again to find any meaningful information. They don't answer any of the visitors buying related questions, and they can be really bad for SEO. Now, if your photography is a hobby, then none of this probably matters very much. But if you're in the photography business to make a living, then it matters a great deal. In short, anything that gets in the way of your potential clients or fails to answer their questions, and they're probably not the questions you thought they were, is bad for business. 
So stop thinking that a home page needs to be some kind of fancy or elegant storefront window that will entice people inside because that model is not appropriate for the online world. It might work in the mall, but it's a sure way to fail online. Number two, Google can be fooled by hiding text from the visitor. Well, if you've been around SEO for any length of time, you'll no doubt be familiar with the term black hat as applied to certain SEO techniques. In accordance with the old idea that SEO folk belong to some obscure order of mysterious wizards trained in the dark arts of internet tomfoolery, terms have evolved such as white hat, black hat and grey hat. White hat techniques are the tried and tested, proven strategies and tactics that are known to work and are just common sense. I don't have anything more to say on those, just practice them. Grey hat SEO lies at the fringes. Here we're not so sure whether they're particularly good or bad, or they might be attractive to the more adventurous SEO people and risk takers. Treat them like hot chilli powder, use with caution and sparingly. Black hat tactics belong in the realm of the internet scammer and unscrupulous SEO consultants, the kind who promise people they can be number one on Google by the end of the business day with no effort on their part. Taking our wizard analogy a little further, this is the Mordor of SEO and you've been warned to keep out. Hiding text from visitors in the name of keeping the site attractive looking by using the same color as the background or placing it in hidden fields for example definitely falls under the black hat heading so don't do it. Besides there's a far more compelling reason to have the text proudly display displayed on your website's home page and every page for that matter which brings us to the final part. Number three, aesthetics and design are the most important, well almost but not entirely. This is the most difficult part of the question to answer, but something we must remember if we're to make a living in this business is that we're not photographers. That's right, we are not photographers, instead we're marketers and sellers of photography. Failing to treat what we do as a serious business only means we have an expensive hobby. By that I'm not suggesting that you're not serious about being a professional photographer, just that we need to be serious about it being a real business. Yes, I know business, marketing and SEO might not be as sexy as lenses, cameras, Photoshop and the like, but it's critical nonetheless if we're to keep doing this in the long term. Therefore we must approach everything we do in our photography business from the perspective of serving our clients to the very best of our ability and making money in the process otherwise we have no business. So when it comes to the website and the idea that aesthetics and design are more important than SEO or marketing considerations, we have to ask ourselves, is that an accurate assumption? As photographers, we often assume that our visitors only need to see our beautiful imagery to get what we do and to understand that we're the right photographer to help them. That might be true sometimes, but the assumption that it's the only way to present what we do is actually wrong. For one thing, our prospects and clients don't have the benefit of knowing what's in our head regarding the story of our imagery. They weren't there when it was created and they have no experience to draw upon to comprehend the story outside the frame as it were. As much as we hate to admit it, photography doesn't sell itself and photography alone is insufficient to tell the story. Not only that, our photographs taken in isolation don't answer the critical questions in the minds of our prospects. Such questions as, why should I hire this photographer rather than any of the others I just looked at? Does the photographer understand why photography is important to me at this time? How well does the photographer relate to their subject? I'm nervous about this whole thing and need someone I like and trust. How personal is the service that I'm going to get? To make matters worse, in the vast majority of cases the prospect is totally unaware that they even have these questions in their mind. They're just not conscious of them in any way that they can articulate them. If they were, it would make our job a heck of a lot easier. If we were to ask our prospects how they'd know they'd found the right photographer for them, they wouldn't even be able to give us a definitive answer. Try it for yourself, ask someone that question and see what kind of answers you hear. It's very illuminating. So the reasons people have for hiring a photographer more often than not have an emotional basis rather than a logical one. 
there might be some exceptions of course, perhaps with commercial photography, but even then there is often a factor that can be attributed more to a, what you might call a good feeling than a logical reason. This is why we need to have text on the pages as well as the photographs. Then, while we are writing good copy to satisfy our business needs and the needs of our prospects, we can also ensure it's properly optimized for the right keywords to help us achieve better search engine rankings. Before I close this off though, I do want to make a very important point. Too many photographers are under the mistaken belief that SEO, good design and aesthetics are somehow mutually exclusive. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. On the contrary, it's perfectly possible to have a website that satisfies all of these requirements without having to make sacrifices, and it often comes down to a question of creating balance between these different aspects and being creative in the way the information is presented. WordPress, for example, is especially adept at handling this, which is why I love it and the Genesis framework from StudioPress so much. For example, we can accompany photographs with client testimonials to say things with much more authority than if we were to say them ourselves. Being more open about our own feelings and motivations for doing what we do also goes a long way to helping us connect with the prospect in ways that answer some of those nebulous but important questions that I mentioned above. Using video is another way to connect with people to show who you are as a person and a photographer, including a transcript of the video also helps those who prefer to read as well as the search engines. By approaching the issues of aesthetics, design and SEO together in a holistic manner that's in alignment with your business goals, you'll find that people can still fall in love with your beautiful and compelling photography the moment they see it, others can read the story behind you and your work, and Google goes away happy knowing exactly how to index your website to send more people your way. Everybody wins including you. So I hope that you found this useful and if you would like to uh, leave a comment or tell me what you think or if you agree or disagree with anything in here then go ahead and leave a comment down there at the bottom of the post and uh, as always it's always great to hear from you and uh, in the meantime thanks again for being here I really appreciate it and I'll see you again for another edition of Headshot Monday uh, next week and uh, between now and then, of course, I wish you continued peace in your business.